So now we want to complete this example here with the triple integral of e to the negative x squared plus y squared plus z squared all to the 3 halves power, there's a lot, uh, with respect to v, the volume, where d is the solid between the spheres x squared plus, nine, or x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9 and x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 16. So it's important to note that these are both spheres. So what you have is one sphere that has a radius 3 nested inside another sphere of radius 4. If you want to see that in maple, this is what it looks like. So I plotted 3D in the spherical coordinate system. So a radius 3 and a radius 4 spheres, blue and gray, so you can see them, and there they are. Right, so one is nested inside another, and so what you're doing is you're really finding the volume of that kind of uh, clear gray space um, that's inside the gray sphere but outside of the blue sphere. Okay, so let's see here. Well, first of all, I'm going to draw that. So I drew the two spheres. So I have kind of a blue sphere inside, and I have kind of that gray, you know, black sphere on the outside, and there we go. And then I have to figure out my coordinates. Well, for one thing, it helps to notice that these two equations are exactly what rho is. Rho is 4, or 3, excuse me, on this one, and 4 on this one. That's why when I'm looking at maple, when I graph it, in the spherical coordinate system, what I'm graphing is rho. So rho is 3 and rho is 4 will get me my two equations. All right, good to know. And then when I look at the equation, I can see that that right there is e to the, well, this is rho, right? Rho squared, in fact. So this is rho squared, and so it'll be e to the negative rho squared to the 3 halves. So rho is kind of obvious. I mean, rho is going from 3 to 4. Rho is working its way from the inner circle to the outer circle. And similarly, I'm doing the whole sphere. So theta is really easy to figure. So I've got theta as that pink arrow right there. So I'm going to go theta from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to do a full revolution. So no problem there, 0 to 2 pi. So Rho is from 3 to 4, theta is from 0 to 2 pi. I've got my equation e to the negative rho squared to the 3 halves, and of course the, the squared and the 3 halves are going to cancel. So I've got e to the negative rho to the third, right? Because if I take, sorry, if I put in, let's see, rho squared right there, the rho squared, the squared will cancel with that division by 2 right there, and it'll leave you rho cubed. And that's why I've got e to the negative rho cubed right there in that equation. And then remember, we always add on rho squared sine of um, phi onto these. So that just gets thrown onto there, no problem. d rho, rho is going from 3 to 4. d theta is the pink one, that's going from 0 to 2 pi. And then the hard one to figure out is your phi. So phi is the angle from the top, the positive z-axis. So imagine the tip top of the sphere working its way down but then it kind of swings around to 2 pi. So it, it goes from here at the top all the way down to pi at the bottom, and then the theta is what causes it to swing around and form the full sphere. So our phi is going from 0 to pi. Once we have this set up, the uh, Integration should be relatively straightforward, but we have the setup, so rho is going from 3 to 4, theta is going from 0 to 2 pi, phi is going from 0 to pi, everything is constant, which is really nice, so it means the integration is going to be easy, relatively speaking. So I start off by noticing that there's no theta in any of this, so if I look at my rho squared sine phi, right, there's rho and there's phi as variables, but theta is not a variable, so I'm going to kick 2 pi out to the curb and get rid of my d theta right there. So 2 pi is going to go out in front, d theta is gone. And then if I have to choose between rho and phi, I'm integrating with respect to phi, because there's only a sine of phi right here. Integral of sine is negative cosine, leave the e to the negative rho cubed times rho squared out there on its own. So there you have it. And we're taking that from 0 to pi. So I would take negative cosine of pi minus the cosine of 0. Now that's not one you can just make pi. Remember, cosine of 0 actually is a number. So we actually have to show it. So negative cosine of pi minus the negative cosine of 0. But the cosine of 0 is 1, so it's negative, or excuse me, 1 minus a negative 1, which is 2. So this whole bit right here makes 2, which means I have 4 pi out in front, not 2 pi. I'll, multi I'll take that constant of 2 out in front. So it'll be 4 pi, and then 
3 to the 4 e to the negative rho cubed times rho squared. Now technically you could do this with a u substitution, but in our class we don't have to bother with the last integral, we can just use maple. So I did, at least I think I did, oh yeah here it is. Alright, so I actually showed the whole thing right there. Let me make this a little bit larger so you can see it. So that is the actual answer, which is annoying. Um, and then there it is numerically. So this is the original uh, rho cubed sine phi equation. And then to make sure I was doing my integration right, my steps right, I put in the one that we were just looking at, 4 pi times rho squared times the e to the negative rho cubed. And sure enough, it gets me the same answer. So I know by putting in the original equation and then the one that I got to in that last step, I've actually double checked my work, that this work here in these middle two steps is correct. And sure enough, it is. So my mass would be 7.87 times 10 to the negative 12 kilograms. You can imagine this is very small, so this might have something to do in physics, say with applications for atoms or um, neutrons, protons, that kind of thing. There was no particular reason to know it was kilograms unless I tell you somewhere that um, to assume that it was in kilograms per meters cubed or something like that. So if I gave that to you kind of right here at the start, then you would know it's kilograms. But otherwise, you wouldn't have any, any choice. And what you have really found was the mass, right? I mean, technically, you'd, you'd need to know that this function was density, right? So it really, instead of being an f of xyz, it would be kind of a delta of xyz. But, you know, that's a pretty safe uh, bet to make. So if that was the case, and this function you were integrating was the density, then what you've actually found is the mass right here.